Okay, welcome back to the Integrated Rangeland Management class here at the University of Idaho. I'm Karen Launchbaugh. Today we're going to get some really basic elements of range animal nutrition. This, this lecture is not designed to help you become an expert in animal nutrition. It's designed to help you connect to topics that you may have heard of in other lectures or seminars that you've been to, some elements of animal nutrition, and then just really help you focus on the really important topics as you start to manage livestock or be concerned about wildlife on rangelands. Remember that animals were domesticated and livestock were produced about 10,000 years ago because they were used to produce meat, milk, and fiber. And that's, so that's been going on a long time. The challenge as a manager of livestock is that you're trying to use a forage resource that is really highly seasonally variable. In other words, it's really uh, good forage in some times and not in others. And then it's also really consistent across the landscapes, good in some places and not others. So the challenge is, to help animals negotiate the environment to produce the, the products that we want. To do uh, an understanding or to create an understanding of uh, livestock nutrition or, or wildlife nutrition, we got to focus on the main classes of nutrients that are needed by the animal. And those in this class that we're going to focus on are water, carbohydrates, lipids or fats, proteins, vitamins and minerals. We're going to start with water because that's the largest component of our body. The bodies of mammals um, vary in the, the amount of water that's in a body of a mammal is from 50 to 70 percent. Uh, we're more water when yet for young animals and less when older, but that's a lot of water. So the largest component of our body is water, and we use that water in chemical reactions such as enzymatic digestion in the gastrointestinal tract or the GIT and also cellular metabolism. Ne nearly any chemical reaction in our body is going to require water. Water is also really important in helping regulate body temperature. Just a couple little elements. We'll talk about water later, but just remember that when temperature is high, animals require more water, and when temperature is low, they require less water. Other aspects important for water is that animals um, will access forage that's near water because they, they require so much of it on a daily basis. And then also uh, the demand for water depends not only on temperature, but also on uh, what the animal is eating. Because forage, any grazing, any plant that the animal eats has some water in it. And so the amount of water in the forage can affect the demand for drinking water. Next, let's uh, focus on carbohydrates. Remember, carbohydrates are the main source of energy in an animal's diet. Uh, the energy in carbohydrates is used for maintenance, growth, reprodu reproduction, lactation. Anything that the animal does in a year is going to require energy on a daily basis. W when we measure that in the lab, um, we look at structural carbohydrates, which are used for energy, but we also look at NFE or nitrogen free extract. Those are those soluble carbohydrates like sugars and starches, which are very important. Again, so the, the, the fiber content, which is, is going to become energy, is neutral detergent fiber. And that um, is the way that we determine what, is, what are those cell walls, how much of the cell wall content are animals eating, hemicellulose, cellulose, and, and lignin. Acid detergent fiber is also a term for what we might measure in the lab that relates to, to fiber. And it measures the portion that is really the hardest part to digest. So that's the, the, lig, the li, cellulose and the lignified cellulose. Eventually, all those fibers can become energy in the animal because of that, in that um, relationship that animals have ruminants and hindgut fermenters with microbes in their gut, which can turn that fiber into, um, into a, an energy compound that we can use, a volatile fatty acid. Turn next to lipids. Lipids are, are fats. They're the um, most available energy. They, uh, we always take uh, what they call the EE, the ether extract, which removes lipids from forage compounds in the lab. And then we multiply it by 2.25 um, so that it's more um, in line with uh, what a carbohydrate is. So that's how we get energy. It's 2.25 more energy than carbohydrates. So we take ether extract, which we create in the lab to get the amount of energy in lipids. There's not a lot of lipids on rangelands, but they are found in seeds because some seeds can have quite high fat, like acorns are pretty good forms of, uh, of um, lipids. Uh, li lipids are really important because there's quite a few processes in the body that are hydrophobic. In other words, they're not, um, they're, they, they, they don't use uh, water to process or to, to um, 
to be completed. So it's those, in those chemical reactions that are hydrophobic, we need lipids uh, to complete them. Protein. Of course, we all know that protein is important. It is, again, made, made up of amino acids, and it's composed of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. Those amino acids are the building blocks of protein. And then the, those amino acids and protein are the muscle tissue um, that animals have, and that anything, a lot of things that are needed for proper cellular function require protein. And when we do this in the lab, we actually only measure nitrogen. So we take the percent nitrogen times 6.25, and that gives us crude protein. So that's why it's called crude. You might have heard that term before. It's crude because we're not actually measuring protein. We're just measuring nitrogen. And we know that amino acids are about 6.25% uh, nitrogen. So we just, we just multiply the, the nitrogen in, in the equation to get crude protein. It's, it's typically... Uh, um, the most expensive nutrient, it's, a, it's very difficult for animals to get in the environment uh, because that nitrogen is hard to come by in range forage. Uh, just to give you an idea, range forage, really excellent range forage would be about 30% crude protein. And really poor crude protein like standing dead grass would be like 4% crude protein. So those are the ranges that we might see on rangelands. Here's some trends, seasonal trends in protein. We track protein a lot because animals need a lot of it, and there's many times where the forage isn't supplying enough. Remember, if, if you can think back to nutritive value of plants, remember that forbs generally have a bit more protein than grasses do. And no matter whether you're talking about grasses or forbs, they're quite high and usually abundant in the spring and summer. And uh, we don't see inadequate levels of protein till fall and winter. But for example, in grasses, we can definitely get to levels in the four to 6%, which would not be enough protein to provide the needs for the animal. And that would happen in the winter. We won't talk a lot about vitamins, but they can be very important uh, in many situations for both livestock and wildlife in, um, management, because there are situations where those vitamins may become inadequate. And keep your eye on, on what vitamins are. They are those organic compounds that are needed only in really small amounts, but they're essential to normal metabolism because they're involved in all of that chemical reactions that happen inside the cell during metabolism. So they're really important. Kind of two different categories of vitamins, some that are fat soluble. A, vitamin A, D, K, and E are all fat soluble vitamins. And then the ones that are water soluble, vitamin B and C. Um, a and E are especially important because they are really abundant in green plants, so they're the ones we often run short of in the winter time. A and D and E. We'll also talk a bit about minerals as um, are needed by animals out on the range. These are inorganic elements. So remember, vitamins are organic, so minerals are those inorganic elements that are needed in the diet. They're also needed a lot for metabolism and metabolic processes in the animal. They're often needed in small quantities, but we divide minerals into two categories depending on how much they are needed in the animal's diet. So macro minerals are ones that are fed at fairly large quantities, usually fed at grams per day, and those would include um, uh, magnesium, calcium, phosphorus, sodium, chloride, potassium, sulfur. Those would be some common ones that are needed. Um, there's uh, microminerals are also needed. They are fed in much smaller quantities. So microminerals are in parts per million. And those might be things like um, manganese, iron, copper, zinc, molybdenum, and, and uh, selenium. Those are the ones that are very needed in very small quantities, but that doesn't mean that they're not important. For example, selenium is one that we often see limiting in range, and it's really um, damaging to reproduction. And if animals don't have enough selenium, they, they can't pr produce young the next year. So they're very important, just needed in small quantities. Energy. We spent a lot of time already talking about energy sources in plants. Um, we talk a lot about that because energies are really needed by animals. They're, they're um, difficult to determine. And they're important for nearly every stage of life. They're important for maintenance, growth, lactation, and gestation. So we'll um, mention all of those in a later lecture when we're talking about animal demand. But just remember that energy is something that we keep our eye on because we know that it's needed for the animals to complete their life cycle. What are energy important for? They're important for body condition to maintain the animal's body condition, especially wild animals uh, need to have fairly high body condition 
as they go into the winter. So we often pay attention to body condition. It's also important that animals are high enough in body condition so that they can reproduce and they can form uh, fetuses and, and have a live young. Energy uh, values of feedstuffs are, are determined sort of in two ways. One, we are going to talk about total digestible nutrients. And then we'll also talk about net energy because we need to keep track of how much the animal needs, not just what the forage supplies. So total digestible nutrients then are calculated as a, the digestible portion of the feed. So, so what is able, what is in the feed is able to be to serve as nutrients or um, or um, energy. So TDN equals the percentage of crude protein plus the percent of crude fiber plus the percent of nitrogen free extracts. Again, those are those really soluble carbohydrates plus the percentage of ether extracts, which are, which are the fat times 2.25. So the lab measurements are really of digestibility and it's relative to its energetic value. So TDN is somewhat digestible, but it's a little bit more than that. It's really focusing on the energetic value. I'm going to walk you through how we think about energy in what's called the net energy system. I'm not sure that you need to remember all of these except for this major concept that we could measure the amount of energy in a plant that intake energy. So how much energy is in the forage that's going into the gut of an animal? And that we measure by collecting up the, uh, the diet and putting it in a bomb calorimeter and just, just seeing how much total energy would come out of it if we burned it to completion. That of course is not all available to the animal. The animal uses energy to um, to digest and process feces. So there, first we have to get rid of any fecal energy, any energy that comes out of the animal's fecal matter. And that would would call, um, give us digestible energy. So now we know what's, what's in the plant, what is lost in feces, and then we have digestible energy. Animal also loses energy in gases and urinary energy. And if we get rid of those, then we can talk about the amount of energy that's actually available for metabolism or metabolizable energy. Now we're getting down to something that might tell us a little bit more about the body condition the animal is in. If we get rid of heat, because we can't really process heat, but if we get rid of heat of the animal, then we're ended up, we end up with NE or net energy. So this is the net energy for production. This is the amount of energy that's actually able to turn into um, to young or, or milk or work or, or process products of the animal. So you'll see in um, if you're studying uh, that plants, you might see kind of what the, the nutrient value of a plant is. And what you're really looking at is, is how much of that energy is available for net energy of production. In summary, then, let's just keep our eye on the ball and remember that there's six major nutrients or categories that we're interested in in order to help uh, pay attention to the and, and provide for the normal maintenance, growth, and, and production of animals that are under our care. And those would include water, carbohydrates, vitamins and minerals, fats, and protein. Those are the main components that we measure in plants. They're the ones that animals need in high, in high amounts to be productive. Nutritional composition of forage depends on the stage of the plant maturity and the seasonal variation from place to place and season to season. So that's why we measure these throughout the season and try to help make sure that we can help animals meet their demand. Remember this term TDN, percent TDN. TDN. In concept, that's just how much the feed of the animal is expected to digest and utilize. So if you knew the percent TDN of a plant, you would have a sense of whether it was high forage value or low forage value. I also introduced the net energy metabolism system, or the, sorry, the net energy system or the NE system. And uh, again, what that is to try to keep our eye on the, um, on the, I, on the idea that animals may take in energy, um, but the amount that's available for their actual production is quite a bit lower. So net energy is the energy that's available from plant compounds for the animal to, to be productive, to maintain, grow, and, and reproduce. Those are a really brief overview, but I hope you get the really base, base compounds or basic ideas of animal nutrition. Remember those six categories and start to think about as we go through this class, how do we help wildlife or livestock um, meet those energy demands through our management practices.